Welcome to Unveiling the Power of Rebranding in Homepreneurship. What's up, Awaken Leader? We're going to be talking about the importance of rebranding for growth and new opportunities. Majority of my clients are hesitant and even starting with the vision that God has given them because they believe in it like that they just can't do it because it has to be perfect. Let's tackle that today. Let's get started. Are you ready to start packaging the power in your testimony? Are you sick of all of those intrusive thoughts that seem to hinder you from faithful obedience? Because you truly believe that faith without works is dead, right? Hey, what's up? My name is Angelica Stanley. Welcome to Niche to Nations, where I help you unleash the power in your testimony through homepreneurship. As your host, I'm here to equip you with the biblical leadership principles, practices, and the promises of God that will help you walk out God's plans for your life. In each episode, we'll dive deep into the power of testimonies and practical steps to transform your entrepreneurial journey by empowering you through obedient action. That's right. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And don't forget to check out Niche to Nation's online biz growth hub. This is your go-to resource for growing your faith-based business. Now let's get started. All right. So the main thing that we're going to kind of break apart today is what is rebranding. So the easiest way that I could explain this to you is that you started with a brand. Okay. So let's simply define brand because I believe that majority of the time my clients start with me and they come with an idea, an assignment, a vision that God has given them, and they they just want to package it, right? And so essentially, when you're doing what you believe God is calling you to do, that idea, that vision, and you package them all together, you essentially have a brand, okay? And let's look at what a brand is in a whole okay so a brand is inclusively positioning architecture the compass of your brand like where your brand is going the archetype the personality the promise the proposition the advantage competitive advantage the visual identity the verbal identity okay so When you look at things in everything, what is a brand? I want to kind of break it down into these few things for you. Okay. There's eight of them. Design, value, strategy, logo, marketing, advertising, identity, and trust. Now, I started to unpack this back in 2017. Okay. Got the vision. Didn't know what branding was. Didn't know none of that kind of stuff. But I was given these eight things and I started with design. Now you might be thinking, why would you start with design? Like that is like, that should be the last thing. Well, that's how it was given to me. Okay. Um, One of the actual gifts that I have is being able to hear someone speaking and I photographically in my mind can see what they're talking about. And um, for example, I've worked with Shanice Jones of I Am Her Academy and I do Canva designs and all of these different things. And I did them as a side hustle and she knew that, but like every graphic or anything that I've ever made, I've never had somebody do it. I did it for myself. Not that I didn't want to, but I enjoy doing it. And it was a creative thing that I saw something and I wanted to create what I saw. Now, could someone do it better? Absolutely. I'm sure. Okay. Um, But I knew it was something that God had gifted me that um, I wanted to, you know, tap into and and steward it and, and, you know, use it correctly. And so with that being said, Shanice Jones was like, sis, you know, God gave me this vision, gave me this you know, I see this and, or this is what he said and all of this. And I was like, wow. And I would create her a graphic and she would be like, oh my goodness. 
And the reason why I say that when you say what is a brand and we have to define that, you start originally with the design and then you start to look at the value of what you are doing, right? And what your assignment is and what God is giving you. So what is the value? And then when you're looking at the value of what this is, it essentially helps you understand not only what you're offering to people, okay? Because I don't want you to ever think that it's um, a monetary thing. It's more of what is it, what solution are you solving for them, okay? And so when we look at, you know, the word value, automatically it's we can look at worth, merit, usefulness, use, utility, practicality, and advantage. So I want you to look at this in the sense of value in marketing, okay? And, but looking at the root word of value, as in the regard to something that is held in importance or worth or usefulness. That's just the straight definition, right? As a noun. But we also use it in a context of principles, moral principles, ethics, moral code. So it's not just um, like a lot of times in I'll work well inside of Niche to Nations, we work on like your vision statement. We look, work on your mission. We work on your elevator pitch. We work on things that you don't seem to use every day, but they are something that flagship the entire ship, if that makes sense. Okay. So when you begin to be working on an assignment or you begin to start building and creating, um, let's see, a product or um, a collaboration, does this product collaboration, does this go with the value of what your brand represents? Okay. So I say of that because now I'm going to take you through the will again. Okay. So we're going to go back to this and it essentially is strategy. What is the strategy that you have that God has given you to get your solution to the community or to the online space? Okay. The solution that I have is through digital marketing and workshops, okay, in the community and in the online space. And so I share all of this because when a lot of times you you're you're like sitting there, okay, Lord, give me strategy. <laughs> and really the strategy is daughter son, if you would just do what I asked you to do three months ago, the strategy would have unveiled itself to you because it would have been obedience. Does that make sense? I hope, I hope you caught that. Okay. Make sure you're picking up what I'm throwing down because this is literally the essence, because if you can get the design of something, um, I'm going to define design for you real quick. Because I think sometimes we skip the design process and I'm actually, um, I'm actually hosting a set it up Saturday and we talk a lot about this, but on my leadership page, AngelicaStanley.co, I'm talking or I'm hosting um, a workshop. Um, they're called um, digital wealth workshops and the digital wealth workshops are created to help you create, help you design and help you deliver. Okay. So you create, you design and you deliver. 
And when you create, you design, and you deliver, that word design in there really means a plan, a blueprint, a drawing, a scale, a stretch, an outline, or a map, okay? But it also can be a pattern um, or a device, a style, an arrangement, a composition of things, okay? So whether it's a drawing, an outline, a sketch, it's a design of something, okay? So when we create something, right, when we let's say you make a cake from scratch okay or you may, let's actually go to cooking let's say you make this delicious dinner and it was the bomb.com right you created something and you just whipped up boom 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 you just pulled out like you just flow like you just like yeah let me throw some of that and all this whatever and you just know what to do and you you know you put your foot in it so my husband says okay and when you do that you created something okay well the design portion of that is writing how did you do that exactly step by step what did you do so we have recipes right well that's the design okay the design the layout the blueprint the arrangement of things and then you deliver it okay so i wanted to kind of unpack all of this for you in the context context of just breaking down those first three because you have design you have value you have strategy now here is where the sweet spot is okay once you have the blueprint or the design okay and you break down the value meaning how is this going to solve the problem what does it do for this particular person okay then you look at strategy and you look at the statistics and you say okay where is this person hanging out right and where is this person hanging out and how are they hanging out and what is it that they like and a lot of the times people think like i have to do this huge elaborate thing and really it it doesn't like you see these big events and all of these things that happened um they started out really really small and they got really really good and they got really powerful testimonies and and results from the really small okay so let's go back to the kitchen the strategy was i was in the kitchen and i had to make dinner and I didn't really think about what I needed to because we had plans to do something, but those fell through. So then I had to come in the kitchen and I had to whip it up. Okay. And so I did what I had to do. And I just, for me, my, my safety net is creation. Like, I know that's really weird, but my safety net and like my go-to for relaxation and like peace is prayer, worship, and creation. Like, that is like my jam. Like I, it just, that is like my safety net. Like that's my comfort, my blanket. I love it. Like give me a quiet moment just to be in the presence of God and really just worship him and remind him, not that he needs me to remind him, but tell him who he is and then remind myself of who he is, right? Like that exchange and then his grace his love his mercy everything that he is and how he is he just he's so loving and kind that as i get into that sacred place he unpacks all of those things and he gives me we create something we break through something we go through something and as we do that, we start to unveil the very importance of what the strategy is in order for me to get things done that I need to get done. And so when that happens, you go on to the process of the design, value, and then strategy. The next part and the last part that I'm going to talk to you about is your logo. And so when you're in the kitchen and you're doing something in that like 
oh my goodness, got to get this done. I just got to make dinner. I had plans. I was supposed to go do something else. This didn't happen. So now I got to be creative and I got to pull all these things together. And this really isn't something for me, but you're like, okay, Lord, lead me to do this. I got to get this done. Well, after you're done with that and somebody tells you, oh, this was really, really good. How did you make that? Well, you want to create a blueprint to that. That's a recipe. And so you keep doing that over and over again. And then that becomes like your Thursday meal or your Friday meal or whatever. It's the same way in digital products. It's the same way in your relationship. It's the same way if you figured out how to make $10,000 a month, well, you continue doing what you're doing to make $10,000 a month until it breaks and it's not working anymore, right? And so that's given unbirthing the strategy. So the strategy comes from, okay, let me look at the design. Let me look at the value. And then once I, now I need the strategy. Once I get the strategy un, like unraveled and unlocked, I package all of those and that's where my logo comes in. So where you think of like Betty Crocker or Duncan Hines, they started in the kitchen, the, the creation portion, the design, they had a thing, I'm going to make this cake, or I've been making this cake, or, oh, she's been making these cakes, these are heavenly, these are powerful, she, blah, 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 whatever. The value of it, well, what did it do? It created an opportunity for moms who were busy and had to start going to work and couldn't necessarily be in the kitchen to cook four times, you know, all this different stuff. That was a value to it. It still allowed moms to bring that warmth of home cooked goods on a shorter time. That was a value. Now, if we look at strategy, what did they do? They packaged it. They got the recipe. They put it on a box. They did everything that they needed to do. They put it in stores. Why did they make it in the stores? And why did they do it in the stores? They did it because where do moms go on their times? Oh my goodness. This is missing. I'm not able to cook like I used to, but hey, this is in an hour instead of four hours. I could get boom, boom, boom. It has everything for me. That was a strategy. And then it went into, okay, now that we have a strategy, what is the logo? What does the logo represent? And that's what we're going to talk to about, talk to you about here in the last few minutes of this. So I couldn't let this podcast go without showing mad respect and giving props to my sister, Shanice Jones of I Am Her Academy, because if you are picking up what I'm throwing down and you're trying to walk out this rebrand vision that God has for you and build it on a biblical foundation, because you know that's what we're about at Well Valley, and you start to notice all of these past hurts or things that are coming up for you, you need to head over to I Am Her Academy. Be sure to click the link in the description of this podcast. Follow my sister in Christ on Instagram. She shows up giving you parenting support, inner healing support, mindset support, all from the word of God. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to all she has at I Am Her Academy. And I'm so grateful that she's a proud sponsor. So what is basically your logo? Your logo is something, and I'm going over the, like these four main ones, because this is where you can start. Okay. A lot of times people don't want to start because they think they have to have everything all in an order, you know, of the eight steps that I talked to you about in, you know, the marketing, the advertising, the identity, the trust, the, all of that kind of stuff. That all comes in a, like in time, okay? Those, the, the back end of the eight that I'm telling you, the marketing, the advertising, the identity, the trust, all of that, that comes in action, okay? And so when you look at a brand logo, the brand logo is essentially something that has you st- set, set apart, right? You can create, you can do all this, but what does it say? What does it represent? Um, it has an identity of itself, but it covers everything. So like if you look at Well Valley, we um, basically it's Well Valley. And if you look at it, it is basically a shape or like a diamond and or not a diamond, a square. And it has a water drop 
and it has certain colors in it and basically well valley like holy spirit led well into purpose okay that's our logo our hashtag where your story begins that type of stuff so what does that mean well everything that comes from there the whole purpose of it was to it doesn't matter what product what partnership it has to be holy spirit led okay i'm going to talk to you quickly about biblical principles and what rebranding is because i talked to you about branding and how we do it inside of niche to nations but i specifically want to talk to you about the biblical principles of this because i believe this really ties into the real life examples of a successful rebrand and the explanation of the and and why it's so significant in your business because once you establish what that brand is and you get the action going those last steps to complete of what i was talking to you about as far as marketing advertising identity trust all of that when you complete that circle and you go through you essentially sit back and you reflect and you say oh my goodness i have a brand and when you reflect and you see that, then you are able to rinse and repeat and go through the design, go through the value, go through the strategy, look at the logo, look at the marketing, the advertising, identity, all of those things, because it evolves and it grows. Now, a lot of things for me, very many things stayed the same. They didn't change, but like my logo changed and strategy changed as far as it expanded but it was always on the original blueprint or the design of what god had given okay and so adding things i want you to think of it as every time you go around this branding wheel it's because god has already given it to you and as you stay in obedience and you stay doing it um it's literally your brand is on the potter's wheel and so i want to talk to you about the biblical principles of rebranding because i talk about you know, the biblical stories of the transformation process and the new beginning of an example of being like from Saul to Paul. So Saul essentially was a brand. His, his identity and what he did was he was to kill Christians. OK, that was that's what he believed his identity was. But he became Paul when he learned his identity and his purpose in Christ. Well, that's essentially what your business and your brand is before Christ, after Christ. So when God gives this to you, many of the times when you start business as an entrepreneur, and I say this all the time, is you begin the process of doing what God has called you to do, and you walk it out with the vision, you start looking at the values, he holds you accountable, strategies, and you start to think, I don't know if I could write this book, I don't know if I could do digital products, how am I gonna make 10K a month? Is that even possible? Like all of these different things, right? But remember with God, all things are possible. And so these principles of looking at how God had transformed every single person, every brand provides a transformation. When you're doing business with God, because we're about our father's business, every brand provides a transformation. That's the solution. So how can that those principles and that application be applied to the business rebranding well, when you first started this, you were intimidated, you were scared, you were fearful, you didn't understand what was happening, you struggled with clarity, you struggled with consistency, you struggled with confidence. And now you know who you are. So this next time around, you're doing things a little bit more boldly. You're doing things like I used to be that person, but today I am, I am her. Okay. I am the one God has called to do this. Okay. So you just show up a little different. Okay. Now, because of that, I want to talk to you about the steps to begin your rebranding journey. Okay. The practical steps for assessing and planning a rebrand is really, really simple. Just go back to the basics, go back to where you originally started and look and see what you've done. And is that of God or is that your own leaning on your own understanding? And inside of Niche to Nations, I'm, we're actually, cause I'm, re -up, I'm updating all of the videos cause they've been in there since like 2017. But um, what's happening is I'm giving you an opportunity to go in there for seven bucks a month and actually get your 
rebranding 30 day strategy and it walks you through everything that you need to do in order to not only recap, but also teach you the marketing piece because it gives you an action. To me, marketing is action based. It's relationship based. Okay, so it's going to ask you questions that are going to encourage you to make connections and build those relationships and all of that great stuff. Okay, and so when you're starting that rebranding journey, the importance of aligning the rebrand with God's vision of your vision for your business is essentially have you been obedient to the best of your ability? Now, this isn't to kick yourself or to tell you, oh my goodness, oh, girl, I done failed. I done missed the, I done missed the mark. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, how can what can you learn and what can you do to stay in, in alignment and acknowledging, okay, this got me off course. This got me off course. Okay. So in a quick week re re recap, <laughs> getting tongue tied. I want to tell you that rebranding for growth and new opportunities is essentially you walking through the process in order for you to identify how were you Saul and now you're Paul. So as Saul, you were leading with your own understanding. And as Paul, you are now leading by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you've been on the potter's wheel. So the rebranding journey is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But how can you get back on the potter's wheel where your vision, where your clarity, where your brand and everything is intact? Okay. And learning from what got you, you know, was it shiny object syndrome, right? Thank you for being here. I pray this encouraged you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me in Instagram and a DM. I'd be happy to chat with you about this. I want to personally invite you to join me inside of Niche Nations, the online biz growth hub to start your rebranding journey and transform your business today. Okay. So if you're just starting or you're like, I need a rebrand, I need to, or I need just a, like a, just a nudge to kind of kick things started or I feel dry or whatever. Um, I really think this is going to bless you in this series and it's going to allow you to just start and not feel like everything has to be perfect in order for you to get things done. All right. So click the link in the description, join me inside of Niche Nations. And I, again, thank you so much for being here. God bless you. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Until next time. Turn your skills into a profitable digital product in just one day. Are you ready to transform your incredible talents into a thriving online business while allowing your gifts to mature and make room for you? Imagine creating a digital product and creating a solid marketing plan and setting up an automated store all in just one Saturday. Well, I'm here to introduce you to Set It Up Saturdays this summer. It's a group session for $47 where I walk you through how to create your very own digital product, a marketing plan, and how to deliver that digital product to your ideal client. Set It Up Saturday is here to help you create, market, and sell your digital product in a collaborative group session with personalized one-on-one -on -one experience that I get to tailor for you with guidance and support during a Zoom virtual call. What if you could turn those skills into a digital product that provides value and generates income? Let's identify your niche, create a product that sells, and package it beautifully. Click the link in the description and can't wait to see you for the next Set It Up Saturday.